August 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Philippians chapter 2 from the New Testament. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort provided by love, any fellowship in the Spirit, any affection or mercy, complete my joy and be of the same mind, by having the same love, being united in spirit and having one purpose. Instead of being motivated by selfish ambition or vanity, each of you should, in humility, be moved to treat one another as more important than yourself. Each of you should be concerned not only about your own interest, but about the interest of others as well. You should have the same attitude toward one another that Christ Jesus had, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped but emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave, by looking like other men, and by sharing in human nature. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. As a result, God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So then, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, continue working out your salvation with awe and reverence, for the one bringing forth in you both the desire and the effort for the sake of his good pleasure is God. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God without blemish, though you live in a crooked and perverse society in which you shine as lights in the world, by holding on to the word of life so that on the day of Christ I will have a reason to boast that I did not run in vain nor labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice together with all of you. And in the same way, you also should be glad and rejoice together with me. Now I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be encouraged by hearing news about you. For there is no one here like him who will readily demonstrate his deep concern for you. Others are busy with their own concerns, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know his qualifications that like a son working with his father, he served with me in advancing the gospel. So I hope to send him as soon as I know more about my situation, though I am confident in the Lord that I too will be coming to see you soon. But for now I have considered it necessary to send Epaphroditus to you, for he is my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to me in my need. Indeed, he greatly missed all of you and was distressed because you heard that he had been ill. In fact, he became so ill that he nearly died. But God showed mercy to him, and not to him only, but also to me, so that I would not have grief on top of grief. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you can rejoice and I can be free from anxiety. So welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. Since it was because of the work of Christ that he almost died, he risked his life so that he could make up for your inability to serve me. God, a friend asked me one time, with the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, and Jesus coming and giving a new commandment in the New Testament, the new commandment being, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do the new commandments supersede the ten old commandments? And I was thinking about that today when reading this particular part of Philippians. Philippians 2 is, is one of my favorite parts that Paul has written, especially this first part of chapter 2. And so many uh, excellent ways to live our lives as Christians. But the, the part that I keep coming back to is... Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort provided by love, any fellowship in the Spirit, any affection or mercy, complete my joy and be of the same mind by having the same love, being united in Spirit and having one purpose instead of being motivated by selfish ambition or vanity. Each of you should, in humility, be moved to treat one another as more important than yourselves. 
each of you should be concerned not only about your own interests, but about the interests of others as well. And it's so amazing to me that our commandment from you keeps getting tighter and tighter. So you give us the Ten Commandments as well as the law in the Old Testament. And the Ten Commandments are, are things like um, honor your mother and father, don't covet, don't kill. Then the New Testament um, commandment, which doesn't supersede the old ones, it's all encom encompassing, means the exact same thing. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbors better than yourself. And then this part that Paul is saying is very similar. If you will just put others ahead of yourself, the needs of others ahead of yourself, you will get all of these. If you put the needs of others ahead of yourself, then that means that you love them like I do. If you love them like I do, then you will love me in that same way. You'll put me ahead of the needs of yourself. I will come first and foremost in your life. Then as you're putting the needs of others ahead of yourself, you're not going to covet what they have because you've put their need, what they need, what what you know is best for them ahead of yourselves. You won't kill them because you love them so much that you have put their needs ahead of yourself. You put what is best ahead of yourself. And so throughout the whole Bible, we see this replication of the original Ten, Ten Commandments in different ways with, in this case, Paul talking about it in a very succinct way that if you will just purely put others' needs ahead of yourself, you've got this. If you understand that you always want in an in a unconditional love situation what is best for somebody else, then you are following exactly what God has called you to do. And in this case, Paul is saying, and I will be happy for you too, um, because Paul gets it. Paul gets unconditional love. He, he realizes uh, sacrificial love. He realizes wanting not what Paul wants for people or what Paul wants for himself. He realizes wanting what you want for them, God, is the most important thing. So God, teach us today how that works in our own life. What does that mean to want what is best for somebody else? Um, for some of us, it might be in a relationship situation where we need to learn to be respectful or kind or loving towards another person. In other relationship situations, it may mean letting go of a relationship because what is best for them isn't the current situation. What is best for them is letting them go and concentrate on their relationship with you. Same thing in a work type of situation. Sometimes being right isn't what is best for the situation. Um, perhaps being humble in a situation and letting things slide is what is best because they'll see uh, God's kindness. They'll see God's love. They'll see God's compassion. They'll see God's mercy in you. I think there's so many ways that we can, can apply these particular verses to our life, but we don't because we're selfish people. We do think of ourselves first, um, our own needs and our own desires come first. And I get this wrong all the time, but it is something that I've worked on for years and years and years to try and think of others as better than myself, to try and put their needs ahead. Um, and you already know, God, that there's some stories in my life of things that I, I desperately wanted. I probably, if I'm being completely truthful, I still want them. But I gave them up for all the right reasons. And all the right reasons always have to do with you, God. And ultimately, I have to be okay with that. That you needed these people more than I did. You needed those situations more than I did. Your glory and mercy and forgiveness needed to be reflected in me more than more than I needed to be reflected in those situations. And it's really hard. One of them I did, it was almost 10 years ago. Exactly, almost 10 years ago. And I still struggle with that decision of knowing in this world I could have had what I wanted, but knowing it wasn't the right decision. And you can see how painful it is if it's still bothering me 10 years later. But that goes back to the trust and faith part with you, God, of knowing that you always know what is best for us. You always know what is better for us. And if we'll just let you, you will give us those opportunities. You will give us those things in our lives and you will allow us to glorify you in reflecting our lives so that it becomes all about you. God, help us to be obedient. 
Your son was obedient to the point of death on a cross. And you exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. And God, I don't want to be exalted. I just want to reflect your glory. I just want to do what is right for all the right reasons. So help me today put somebody else in front of my needs. Stop for a second and realize that person cutting me off may be rushing home. Stop me from thinking that if a person doesn't call that, that, that it's a personal offense towards me that they've forgotten about me or I'm not important in their life. I need to remember I'm important in your life, God. And you make that clear day in and day out. Just as you've commanded me to love others as you have first loved me, I need to also put others in front of my needs just as you constantly do with me. Just as you constantly want what is best for me. God, I thank you for that amazing, deep love and the incredible forgiveness when I don't get this right. In your son's name I pray. Amen.